Hi, welcome to another one of my Microtik tutorials. In this one, we're going to go over um, port forwarding at, at a fairly basic level. Um, I will try and do some more advanced stuff uh, in another video, but for the time being, this is something I see come up on the forum now and again. It's a little bit surprising that some people get it as, as wrong as what they do. Um, so here is my input and my way round of doing fairly easy and fairly straightforward port forwarding on a Microtik. So, what we're going to do, we're going to get into our Microtik router first. So I'm going to use Winbox for doing that. It is by far the easiest way to interface with a Microtik router. And you're going to want to do your port forwards on your, your gateway router, your main router if you like. Um, which for me, I'm going to be doing them on this one. Uh, this is the router I use for my tutorials and for my learning. Um, you pop your username and your password in. This one doesn't have a password, but put your password in and connect. The next step is going to be that we're going to have to find which my internet interface, my WAN interface is. So we're going to click on interfaces. Now this isn't something which Microtik does automatically. Um, I have already named this as my WAN interface. I'm connected in on the local interface, the LAN, um, over the SFP slot just here. So. Uh, we now know what the WAN interface is, so we, we want to do port forwards. This is done as part of the NAT, which is a subdirectory, if you like, of the firewall. So we're going to open up IP and we're going to go into firewall. So usually you'd have your filter rules here. Again, this is a local route for me, so I'm not going to have them here, but you will. Uh, I'm going to click on NAT. So you, you should already have some kind of masquerade rule which allows your local devices to go to the internet through your WAN interface and we're going to be doing effectively a, a role reversal of that. So we're going to click on add and the chain is going to be the first one we're going to change and that's going to be DSTNAT. So rather than source, it's destination. So stuff coming back in. Um, there are a lot of matches that you can use here, so, so this works by two things, uh, like a firewall, something to match it, and then something to do with do with it once you've matched it. Um, for this for this part now, we're going to use fairly, fairly basic matches, so we're not going to use it, the, the address at all, we're going to use protocol, so TCP for example. You do have UDP and a whole host of other stuff available, uh, but for the purpose of these and, and this TCP. Uh, destination port, so the port number it's coming in on. So uh, you should know what port you want, you know, 25s and your 465s, your 1723s, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then the inbound interface, which is going to be your WAN interface. Uh, for me, it's Ether1. This could be PPP, uh, could be VPN, could be anything. So uh, inbound interface, Ether1. Once we've matched the, the, the packets, we want to, to do something with them, so we're going to action them. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a DST NAT, so destination NAT, which is Microtik language for port forwarding. So we need a local IP address. Uh, you should know what local IP address you want to port forward to. Um, this is a made up one for me, but it probably won't be for you. Uh, and two ports is, is an interesting one. Um, if it comes in on port 8080, you can leave it blank and it will go along on port 8080. Or if you want to change that port, you can change it to 8081 or whatever you want it to arrive at, at your local device with. Quick comment in there just so that you know what rule this is for. And away you go. Uh, there are some nice little features uh, available as part of this you can put a range in if you want to put a range in if you have multiple ports which are attached to the same device you can comma separate them like that um, but what you can't do is you can't string tcp and udp together so if you wanted one for tcp and one for udp you'd have to hit ok and copy it and then put udp in wherever it's gone and hit OK, then you'd have TCP and UDP. Uh, so yeah, that, that's basic port forwarding. Uh, I do have some more videos planned where I'm going to go over, uh, rather than inbound interface, I'm going to use destination IP address, which means then it, it opens the door for more things like hairpin NAT and how to do hairpin NAT when you have dynamic IP addresses. So if you like the video, please leave a like on it. Uh, any comments, uh, I appreciate any feedback, whether it's good or bad because uh, I do enjoy making these videos and I do want to make them pretty well. Um, yeah, so please, please leave a comment or, or subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, thank you very, very much for watching.